Hey guys, uh, this is Mo Elias. Uh, I'm in New York. I have a frame shop called Big Apple Art Gallery and Framing. Today I'm with Gary from uh, Hoffman USA, and Gary's going to tell us about the Hoffman machine and uh, why uh, your shop uh, uh, needs it. Uh, Gary, how are you? Doing well. How are you, Mo? Good, thank you. Hey, we have Gary's son, uh, Andrew, also helping us out here. And uh, Andrew, uh, you, there we go. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate that. Um, uh, Gary, it's your show. Go ahead. Tell me what is, what is the Hoffman? Okay. Uh, first of all, I again, want to say thanks for doing this, Mo. I appreciate all the help you've been on this. And uh, I'll just give you a little background on myself and the company, and then I'm going to jump right into the video. Yep. Uh, again, my name's Gary. I've been working with Hoffman for 24 years. Uh, Marcus and I have been together and, and kind of grown this thing as, as, as you see it now. Um, Hoffman's a small family-owned company out of Germany. Uh, we've got Marcus and I and uh, two ladies here in the office to help us. Everything will ship out of North Carolina. And as if you guys have any questions, all the questions will be answered out of here. So, um, And the machines are German, you said, right? Yep, they are. Uh, everything's yeah. made in Germany, and we warehouse all the machines the Hoffman keys, the bolt screws, anything you may need are warehoused right outside the doors here. So, Gary, tell me, what is what is the Hoffman machine for somebody who doesn't know anything about the machine? I have one, so I know what it is. If I didn't know what a Hoffman does and what's a key, can you tell me what that is? Okay. What the Hoffman machine does, it'll you take your material. It's going to be pre-mitered in this case. And what we do is we route a small groove. Uh, I'm going to go to the smaller – we route a keyway into these joints and insert a Hoffman key, which is here's one of the tiny ones that we have. And that actually goes up inside the joint that we've machined out and it draws the joint together, holds it under compression, and lets your glue set up. Don't have to clamp it, pin it, and the, the frame is essentially ready to go. Okay. All right. So those that, that's what the Hoffman is. All right. Yes, go sir. ahead. Tell me, all right. Go ahead. Tell me the rest of your uh, uh, show, your, your, uh, your detail. Okay, a couple things. I'm going to hit on three points. A couple of things we run into when, when folks talk to us first thing about a Hoffman machine and say, why do I need a Hoffman? I've already got an underpinner. I've already got a V-nailer. Uh, and the things we always try to point out and tell them is that the Hoffman machine is a good add-on or replacement if, you, if your V-nailer is getting tired and you want to replace it. The Hoffman system will do everything a V-nailer will do, plus a few additional things. Uh, one of the big things in the picture frame industry that's done well for us, if you guys are doing tall, thin frames, I'll explain how we'll help you with that. If you're doing real tiny frames, uh, this frame's the size of a frame that would frame a quarter, to give you a perspective. If you're doing tiny frames or if you're doing things other than 45, uh, we can do all those. The biggest thing is on the tall, thin frames, I'm sure you guys have all ran into the issue when you start stacking V-nails into a frame, when you get to that second nail or third nail, it may want to bubble the side of your frame yeah. or in the worst case, even blow out the side of your frame. And a Hoffman machine, that we address that and take care of that right out of the box. Gary, uh, can you show me how it works on the floater frame? Because we use it on floater frames all the time. Yeah. What we do, and again, I'm going to show the machining process in a moment. But what we do, we route for the Hoffman keys that I'm holding in my hand. Mm -hmm. And when we route, we route into the tall part of the frame and a yep. key will be in there like that. And then we use a shorter key. And the reason we use two keys in a frame like that, that's all you need. You don't need four or five, six. The two keys take away the pivot point of that yep. frame. And again, they let your glue set up. So you're not having to try to clamp that. And uh, uh, this can go on a really, really skinny floater, right? Yes. I've yeah. got uh, – we can get into floater frames with a quarter-inch wall on the side here. Yeah, yeah. And, again, we, we, run a, we run the route for the Hoffman key in and insert the key. Perfect. Thank you, Gary. Yes, sir. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick corner uh, and let you guys kind of see what the machine does. This is just a basic – uh, cap rail, inch and a half. Yep. And what we do is take the key you're going to use. This is the fastener I'm going to use, and this is W1. Yep. I've got a tape scale on top here, so I'm going to set the key on the shelf. And what this does, I'm using the tape scale there, and this locks in place. 
So that's the depth of how deep that's going to route. Then you take your material and determine on that miter where you're going to make your route. And when you lock this in place, you've now got a mirror image for both sides. Mm -hmm. So everything's going to square up when you're done. On this machine, the MU3, you simply pull the handle down. And Gary, what you're doing there is you're putting a, a hole, right? You're putting a route a key. A yep. routing. What we've done, what we've done right there is route for the dovetail key. Yep. And then that lets you you see how close we go to the face. Yep. So that gives you nice face hold on the joint. Then you come in here. Now, Gary, you don't put glue. We always recommend a little bit of glue. I don't for the demos, uh -huh. but we always recommend just a little bit of glue. And then you simply tap the key in. It draws a joint and holds it under compression. Wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. And you got a nice, clean, sharp corner. Yeah. No glue in this joint at all. And you can see, so if you put all four sides together, it's nice and tight. Yeah, I was at a show where uh, Marcus gave me a corner after he put this thing. He said, try to break it, and I couldn't. That's right. That's yeah. right. We do that with folks that it, it kind of stops traffic a little bit. Yeah. When you get it, when you put two keys into a joint, like we did in this shadow box, mm -hmm. you can still use the small keys. You route up to within about the eighth of an inch of the face, yeah. tap the keys in, and that joint is, is complete. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, you talk about keys. How big the keys come and how small they come? I know we use the small sizes. Yeah, in picture framing, the W0, W1, and W2 are the primarily sizes. And then we make them in different lengths. These are W0. Now, how wide is the W0 itself? Uh, two millimeters. Two millimeters. What is that? That's about uh, one-eighth of an inch, a little bit over? Yeah, a little bit under. Under, under, under yep. an eighth of an inch. That's crazy. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then the other most common size is this is a W1. Mm -hmm. So to give you an idea, we just did the last frame with a W1 key. Yeah. And we make the W1 key from a quarter inch long to two and three eighths. Okay. The W0 is coming three sizes. And those are three eighths, seven eighths, and one and three eighths. And I don't know how well this is going to show, but if you look at the end of this key, it's rounded. Uh, pull back just a tiny bit so the focus is better. Yeah, uh, come, closer, the come closer. Yep. It's not focusing, but okay, I understand it. Okay, it's not focusing okay. well. Yep, the key is rounded at the end. I'm okay. exaggerating showing. And then you got a flat end. And when you insert that key with a rounded end in first and tap it in, that draws that joint and holds it under compression. Mm -hmm, it I also see. aligns the joint on the end. Okay. Now, uh, do you do you uh, stack these two? I mean, if I if I had an extra tall frame, can I stack it if I didn't have the, uh, yeah. the exact size key? Yes, you sure can. Uh, we've got people that'll that'll stack them, or uh, I mean, we're shipping the way it is now. Yeah. Uh, we've had people forget to order keys, and they yeah. need to finish a frame, and UPS is a day away. So, say you route into something two inches, you yeah. can use a small one inch key and put it all the way in, the, the big thing we want to key as close to the face of the joint as we can get it. I so see. you can put a one-inch key and then put it maybe a quarter-inch key in the back. Mm -hmm. Leave a void in the center, and you've still got a great joint. Sure, sure. Uh, Gary, somebody's asking, uh, what if the top of the frame isn't flat, but rounded or beveled? Okay. What we do in a case like that, you're assembling the frame, obviously, face down. Mm -hmm. And what we do, uh, the, again, one of those things Marcus and I kind of came up with, you guys may laugh at us and have something a lot <laughs> smarter. But what we did, we actually took business cards yeah. because we ran into that at a show. Because if you, if you have a, uh, a frame that's wobbling like that, yeah. as long as we support it. And what we did is took a stack of business cards, simply tapped the bottom of them, and they follow the contour of the frame. Mm. So then when we insert the keys, it made it perfectly flush for us. So that's what happens when I give out my business cards at the shows, right? People use them to join uh, around. You the got Mar Marcus and I have a whole stack of them sitting next to the <laughs> machine. And <just> like that. 
<laughs> so, right, but so we actually use index cards. Uh, works really well. Just sure. your your uh, standard index cards. All right. So now you had different keys. Uh, mm -hmm. Does each key take a different router bit? It does. The W zero okay. takes a W zero bit. Uh -huh. Obviously, and then W one W one bit W two W two bit. Changing the bits over on this new version of machines. The first time it's going to take you fifteen minutes. Okay. Once you get practiced at it, you can do it in 10. Uh, Marcus and I, like I say, we do it and we can do it in five minutes quickly. The new machine has a, uh, you can't really see it where we've got the camera. Where I'm pointing at right here, we've got a, a fine tune knob mm -hmm. on there now. And what that'll do, it'll let you get the, you get the, the, uh, the bit placement very close. Yeah. And say you want it a little bit tighter, you simply turn the dial. Oh, that's uh, cool. From from zero to one to two to three, and that changes the what we call the projection of the bit. So the bit comes out a little bit further. Yeah, and will make that joint just a little bit tighter. Okay, so so I have the MU two P pneumatic. Yeah. What is the difference between what I've got and what and, and this one? Uh, uh, the one you're demoing now. This is the MU three. You said right. Yes, this is this is the MU3. This is the basic manual machine. The one you have, Mo, has a foot pedal on it. Yeah. These machines, Marcus and I started coming out with about seven years ago, specifically for the picture frame industry. Because mm -hmm. you guys had so many, we lovingly call them weird <laughs> problems that nobody else has in the woodworking industry. Yeah. So what we did, we came out with things like this. Sure. That's a tall center fence. So we addressed the issue of you guys doing tall floaters when this is on it lets you hold it right up against it tight mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it takes that it doesn't want to dump over or move on you just gives you a better way to support it the other things we ran into was people uh, we ran into a lot of flag case uh, commemorative flag case manufacturers and they do a 67 and a half degree angle and we but people could, were always having a hard time trying to join that. So we just designed a synchro fence that'll do 18 to 70. Oh. And anything you want to do in between. And you can put that right on this this machine. We designed it so you just take this off. This drops in the same groove. Sure. No change over time. Oh, that's very cool. Okay. I, I don't and think I'm going about this accessory. Yeah. And we also did one other thing um, because we noticed you guys doing a lot of large long frames 60 inch, 70 inch frames so we have we didn't put it on here because it wouldn't have fit in the video we have 18 inch extension tables that's what these two bolts are for mm -hmm. and you can those are it's a 250 dollar accessory but it puts it gives you wings like this on both sides to give you additional support for those tall frames you know on the heavier frames i have somebody hold it up so that would be helpful to have on the side the, they're really helpful. If you do those and then a little roller assist table at the end, yeah. you, you've got it taken care of. That's very cool. All right. So uh, how much does a machine like this cost? How much is the MU3? You're going to get a machine like this delivered on your doorstep anywhere, like in the U.S. Uh, you're going to float right about $3,000. Okay. Um, they come. We can set it up with whichever bit you guys may want in it. From, from the factory, they send it with a W-2. But we can change one over if you say, hey, I'm not going to use that for anything except tall, thin material, and I want a W0 in there or W1. We'll set it up. So all you guys do when you get it, you take it out of the box, you plug it in, and you're running. If you go with a pneumatic machine, you plug it into the wall, and you hook up. You can run it off a small pancake compressor because it doesn't consume a lot of air, and you're, you're running within five minutes of taking it out of the box. Yeah, mine, mine is hooked up to power and, and pneumatic. But this yep. one is not pneumatic, so you just hook it up to power, you're good to go, right? Yep, yep. this one comes off of a limit switch. Yep. I won't go into any detail, but it just comes off of a limit switch. When you pull down and make contact with your frame mm -hmm. and lift it off, the motor automatically comes on. Sure. We did that so you're not having to sit there and turn it on and off. Uh, it'll come on, cycle, and we have the motors specially wound, so they're made to turn on and off, and it won't hurt them. So, Gary, about these accessories, I have the tall fence one, the one you had for the mm -hmm. shadow box and the big floaters. And uh, I, so I haven't heard about the, the the flag one. I don't do flag, so I wouldn't need that. What else What mm -hmm. else accessories are there with the machine? We make, uh, we've got the tall center fence, like I just showed you. 
Uh We also make what we call tall inside corner fences. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a compound, um, we've ran into this somewhere people are doing like light boxes, frames, if that makes sense. It's a compound miter. They put the artwork in the front and have LEDs behind them. Yeah. And so it's a compound miter. So we make the fence taller in the backside. So the frame actually lays over just like it's going to go up on the wall. And it gives it something to rest against. And again, gives you perfect Mm. alignment when you put the key in. Mm, Very cool. Look, I like everything engineering, uh, everything that's German engineering. And uh, <laughs> this is yep. one of those. This is one of those things. All right. So I got some Hoffman some Hoffman keys from your website. Uh, mm-hmm. They were colored. Uh, yeah. What's the difference between the colored ones and the ones that I got regular with the machine? I got regular brown stuff. Okay, regular brown seems to work well for your industry because again, you guys are putting the keys in the backside. Yeah. And then covering it with a paper or something at the very end. Uh, where the colored keys come in, if you're going to use it as an accent piece. Um, and show it from the front side. I've got a frame here. We make the keys out of wood. I, I'm going to hold it up to the, the second camera. If you look, they're doing keys and showing it from the front side. Ah, you know, like, this is yeah. just a shop. Okay, I know Jessica. Sure, she does beautiful work. Yep, yep. And then that way, she's coming from the from this side, putting the mm. key in. She puts a small plastic key in yep. the joint for strength. And then we make wood keys. So we make six pieces of actual hardwood keys. I see. And those go in through the, through the front. Now, is the wood key stronger than the uh, plastic or vice versa? It's vice versa. The, the wood key is purely a decorative element. Okay. Uh, we make the wood keys out of oak, cherry, maple, mahogany, walnut, and wenge. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a lot of people that try to do contrasting species right now. seems to be a big thing. Yeah, they may do a nice maple frame and put a wenge key in the front, I put see. a clear coat on it, and it really looks nice. I see, I see. And then now, I've also got some people doing colored keys for uh, sports memorabilia. Sure. Uh, because we can do any color you want, so they may come out and do a, again a maple frame, and then say you're a, a Tampa Bay fan, they may put a red reddish key in the front, um, and and it just pops and it goes with the would say a jersey they're framing or something like that. I see. So the plastic ones is, is for strength. The wood stuff yep. is just for show. Wood is purely decorative. Yep. It is an end grain. So it, it would break if it was under any strain or structure. That's why we put a plastic one in. Strength is in the plastic. Wood is, wood is for looks. I see. And uh, so you said there was a show special. Uh, yep. uh, I'm going to put up. So you want everybody to call Marcus directly, right? Yes, I, that's, what, that's what I was saying earlier. Marcus is my, if you don't know him, he's my lovely six foot eight German assistant, also my boss. <laughs> so, and, and again, we've been friends and worked together for many years, but uh, I'll be out of the office some next week. So if they go on the website, you know, they can ask a question at info. Marcus will be here. If they call the office number, Marcus will be here to take care of them and can get some shipped out next week. And I tell you guys, if you catch Marcus at a show, make sure you hang out with him a little bit. He's the funniest six foot eight German guy. <laughs> I never it expected is. a person that tall, that that big and strong to be that funny. <laughs> it is. And hopefully we get back. I miss everybody. Hopefully we can get back to the shows when it's safe and healthy for everybody. So yeah, I, I'm looking I, I, forward I hope to that so too. That would be great. So uh, Gary, did I miss anything else here? Uh, I think I asked you all my questions. Yeah, the one one thing I wanted to address, because I actually, the reason it was fresh on my mind is a lady yeah. called to order a machine last week Yeah. Uh, in the picture frame industry, and she wanted to know how we were different than uh, the thumbnail. She mm-hmm. said, oh, Hoffman is just a thumbnail, right? And I said, well, not really at all, uh, because the thumbnails work perfectly if you're doing the right size frame for the thumbnail. They normally offered about three sizes of thumbnails. And where some people got somewhat of a bad taste in their mouth about a thumbnail is if, again, if you got into those tall frames, two inches tall, and you're trying to put a nine sixteenths inch thumbnail in it, the top would want to open up, which was causing people to have to put a pin in the top of that frame. Mm -hmm. We address that by going with a longer key. Then, because you guys are doing such high end stuff, most of the people that are watching this video uh, and most of the people that are on your site, Mo, are you guys do some amazing stuff and very high end and you don't want to, you don't want to see a little pin nail and have to go back in and putty that or 
uh, we just said, wow, we can't, we can't see that happening. So that's why we go with a longer key. I see. Oh, you know, I forgot to ask you, um, uh, can you talk about how people who make spline corners use the Hoffman? Yes. Uh, when people are doing a spline corner, say we, I'm going back to the frame we just did a few minutes ago mm -hmm. where we, we got the Hoffman key up into here. A lot of folks right now in your industry have like a table saw with a, yeah. with a bench that'll run it across the table saw like this. Yeah. What, it, what the Hoffman key lends itself to and makes it so nice to do spine corners. We're putting the key in. Mm -hmm. So we've got this joint. You can put glue on it. You're not hurting the thing. The joint is put together and held together. You can now pass that with the Hoffman key right over your table saw blade. Just be safe, put it in your cradle, pass it over. When you cut for your spline, you're actually cutting right through the Hoffman key. Yeah. But it's not going to hurt your tooling on your blade. Oh, yeah, so right. If you, if you cut out a 16th inch groove right out of this plastic key, you've still got Hoffman key holding, then you got your spline, then Hoffman key, and then spline. And you've not hurt your tooling. You've not jeopardized the integrity of that joint. It's, it's a best of both worlds because you have a you have a Hoffman key holding the joint this way and your spline holding a key this way yeah this is, so this that's, is that works really well that way yeah uh gary uh i think i covered all my questions uh is there anything else you want to add uh no i again just want to appreciate everybody and if you guys have any questions call us another thing we do and we like to do for the picture if you guys want to send us if you go well, that Hoffman thing looks good, but we don't know how it would work in our frame. If you take some of your off-ball frame and send us six inches mitered on your system so you know we're not playing tricks or anything, send us some of your frames, scrap frames mitered. We'll put whatever key we want in it to look at it and figure out what's going to be the best. Send it back to you. You guys tap the key in and see what you think. Oh, that's it'll, sell it, it'll sell itself once you guys tap that key in. That's wonderful. Uh, Paul Hamager says, finally going to get around to buying one. He's try he, was, he was trying to buy mine, actually, and it's not for sale. I'm sorry, Paul. So he's going to call you, Gary, or Marcus. To get one of those. <laughs> yeah, tell him to call Marcus and, and give him our dime. Yeah. If I'm not here to do it, he can do it. <laughs> All right. This sounds good. Hey, uh, uh, Gary and Andrew, I thank you both for uh, setting this up. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we're, uh, we're appreciative. Thank you very much. Yep, Mo, again, thanks for everything and all you do on this site, buddy. I've learned a lot on here. So, all right, guys. If stay anybody safe has any questions, and, uh, give us a shout. Thank you. Stay safe and thank you very much. Take care, guys. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye bye.